Hello everybody, my name is Kotlon3639, welcome back to another video. Today in this one, it's going to be another top 5 video, and in this one, it's going to be the top 5 meta decks of the July 2021 format, post Remote Dual YCS. So if you actually uh, are a subscriber to the channel and stuff, you're probably asking yourself, didn't you just do this like two weeks ago? And I did, uh, but in, in that video was more like a speculation kind of thing. In this one, we actually got some breakdowns from the YCS and stuff like that. So we have more information in this one, so that's why I decided to do it again. So yeah, it's, it was a very interesting uh, weekend for sure. There's a lot of decks, a lot of d uh, different decks as representation in there. But this we're only going to be covering the top 32 in this one and not the entire YCS uh, breakdown. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So starting off the North American Top 32 breakdown here, as you can see, there's a lot of decks that ended up getting the Top 32, a lot of representation here. Uh, but obviously the first place, uh, the first uh, most represented deck in this breakdown is Tribe Gauge. Of course, a lot of people were expecting it to be the best deck going into this format, and as you can see, has the most uh, representation in this top cut here. Number f uh, second one is Drytron, getting five tops in this one. Very interesting there. Again, Drytron being one of the most powerful combo decks in today's format, yeah, no, no surprise. Drytron's at number five. Number f uh, four, Sky Striker uh, tops here, which that's very interesting as well. Engaged to one and stuff like that. Uh, for Virtual World, you know, I said that Virtual Worlds might have just had a good day in the last one. It looks like that hype is continuing. A lot of Virtual players still topping with the deck. It seems like a very interesting and cheaper friendly uh, deck for this. Format, so uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, we have two Adagnisters here, which is not surprising with their 4,000 attack unaffected by a monster or and unaffected by card effect is going to be ridiculous for the Adagnisters if they get that out. Of course, a hand trap does stop them if you do end up getting a hand trap, but if you end up ha uh, opening no hand traps, it's really, really hard to start outing that 4,000. Uh, guy, but then again, there are access code talker and stuff like that. We have two prank kids in this here. We still going with the prank kids. It looks like uh, people have figured out what to stop in this deck, but it still seems like prank kids are going and going going again in a control format. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised. This is here. We got two invoked Shadal again. Another deck that was just really, really good in the last format. In this format, it's like it's okay. It's still very good if you have the deck. You might as well play it. One is Cyber Dragon. That's very interesting. This is the Cyber Dragon OTK going second uh, stuff like that. That's very interesting to see here. We got one Dino, the Scrap Dino, of course, like that. Uh, scrap uh, is absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised if more people start playing this deck. One Salomon Great, which is interesting. I don't think the deck is that good, but it made the top 32. Maybe it was just a good player. We got one Phantom Knights in here. Well, that's interesting. One Mech Knight Orcus, which, holy crap, that actually topped in 2021 without Harpoor coming off the ban list. That's very interesting. We got one Dragon Link. Like I said in my last video, do not take this deck out. A lot of Dragon support in today's format, so would not surprised to see this in the top 32 and someone actually getting into it. And then uh, the last one being Border Eltledge, just straight up just being uh, Injector Border with the Eltledge package in there just to basically control the game with like like Floodgate and stuff like that as well. So there's your uh, top 32 breakdown. Now let's get into the honorable mention. My first honorable mention here is Dragon Link, which, yeah, no shit, that's just an honorable mention. It's not good enough to be in the top five, but like I said in my last um, um, top five meta decks, Dragon Link should not be counted out either. Dragon Link is, of course, being that got hit so hard with Striker Dragon now being limited to one and LP being banned. But there's a lot of dragon support in Yu-Gi-Oh, so I wouldn't. I'm not surprised this ended up being a top 32 cut. And again, it might be a deck that might take a format to figure out what it's going to do before it starts getting back up to those tiered contentions. But for right now, it is an honorable mention. But it's still very powerful, especially with like more rocket support. We're getting more in the future. I forget. I think it's in Burst of Destiny. Uh, but that's been announced recently. So yeah, uh, we're getting more rocket support. And stuff like that. So they're just getting uh, more support for the Dragon Links and stuff like that. So again, do not count this deck out just yet. It's in the honorable mentions. Uh, for now, I don't think it's going to be in this format in the top five or anything. But keep your eye out on Dragon Link for sure. My next honorable mention is Salomon Gray. Again, even though Mer they got a boost in Mirage Celia coming back to one, I don't think the deck is good enough to warrant a top five or anything 
like that. Again, maybe they only had one top in the top 32. It was actually played a lot in the European YCS. I think it was like the third most represented deck of the entire YCS and stuff like that. So there is that, but I just don't think it was good. You know what I mean? Like, it, yes, it has the combos to start doing stuff for good and stuff like that. And against certain matchups, it ends up being a really good uh, matchup against some other like striker and stuff like that. But just for me, I don't think it's that good. I think people are just hyping it up for now and then they realize later in the format it's not that good. They're going to end up uh, going away from this deck. Again, I think this is just because Mirage Stalio came off to, uh, came to, to one and people really wanted to use this deck because they have this deck because they had it way back in 2019 when it used to be like tier one contention and stuff like that. Again, it has some good stuff in it. I'm not going to say anything about that. It has the access code stuff and stuff like that. But I just not good enough to make the top five for me. So uh, there is that. Next thing up is dinos, and more importantly, the scrap dino variant of the deck. Misk is at one now, and that's unfortunately just unfortunate. But this deck still has really good potential, even though Misk is at one. Yes, that makes a really obvious target for Misk now, but it still has the scrap uh, uh, raptor plays and stuff like that that can be absolutely ridiculous, and it can still fall back on that dino engine as well. If they can get that one Misk off and get... Um, Arcosaur onto the field they can basically go off and stuff like that I really think this deck has potential maybe it takes a ban list or two or to for them to actually fully come to tier one and stuff like that but the scrap raptor is just so good not to see play or to not um, to not get boost dinos up to a tier contention but right now it is an honorable mention but keep your eye out on this deck as well. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is an absolutely ridiculous card. Scrap Raptor being able to now access uh, Dinosaur's extra decks and stuff like that. And it's very good as well. So yeah, keep your eye out on this. Next thing up here is Prank Kids. Now Prank Kids is a was a good deck in the last format. And this format it's still seeing somewhat play. Again, it got two tops in the top 32 of the YCS. Or the North American YCS. But I just don't think it's good enough to make the top five. Uh, it just feels like, uh, yes, it can get into the double regeki with Battle Butler and stuff, start controlling from there. But a lot of people have figured out how to stop that stack, and it's literally stop their normal summon. That's literally it. Either stop their normal summon, or once they go into their Link 1, stop the effect uh, in Graveyard to summon another Prank Kids out onto field. And then basically they're kind of fucked from there because they can't really go into anything else. Prank Kids can't special summon themselves besides their effects in Graveyard. But if you end up negating that... Well, they're kind of fucked from there. So it's either just stop their normal summon or stop the effect in Graveyard to start special summoning out more Prank Kids. Or just have the Nibiru as well, because Nibiru also stops this deck without a doubt. It's just, uh, yes, it's a very good deck when it gets the chance to, but a lot of people have figured out how to stop this deck. And a lot of people are on hand traps in this format. So yeah, not, this is not going to be a top five. This is just an honorable mention. Next thing up is Invoked Shadal. Now, this has been a really bad decline for them because they used to be like one of the best decks in the format in the last format. They have now dropped all the way down to honorable mentions. That's probably thanks to a lot of people now going to a control deck more than a combo deck. Against a combo deck, this deck really uh, shines. And um, in the last format, Dragon Link was tier one and stuff like that. And that's why Winda was very, very good. But once you go into a control format with like Sky Strikers and stuff like that, this is where it starts struggling. That's where it can start struggling and stuff like that. Uh, window is basically their win con, and when Window really does nothing against the deck you're going against, you really have to start falling back on your control engine. And just, yes, Alistair the Invoker is somewhat okay. It's not good enough to carry you through the match and stuff like that. It's the reason why it's mixed with Shadals right now and the Dogmatica packages as well, yes, it's a very good deck if Winda ends up hitting the field, it ends up fucking the deck as well. And I'm not saying it's a terrible control deck. If it goes into a grind match and stuff, it has a chance to win. If it, the right player, if the, the player knows what it's doing, uh, it can end up really uh, going through that control deck. But right now, it's an honorable mention for uh, me. There's really nothing else for that as well. And then the last thing up on the honorable mention list, and again, it hurts me, hurts me to put it here is Eltledge. Uh, yeah, Eltledge only got one top in the YCS. I cannot justify it being in the top five whatsoever, so it has to be in the honorable mentions list. But man, I feel like people are really not trying this deck. Maybe they're just trying the decks 
that are newer, like Striker and Sal- Salomon Great, just to see how they do. But I feel like Eltledge is really underrated in this format, especially the zombie Eltledge version of the deck, which I actually have a deck profile I made a couple of days ago. If you want to see that, I'll put it in the link in the description down below. But man, I feel like the people are really underestimating this deck. This is a really still really control, good control deck. Has the good engine. If you splash it with the zombie engine as well, it's absolutely ridiculous. Zombie World can fuck uh, some certain uh, decks up without a doubt and stuff like that. They control Super Poly in their deck. Well, Invoke controls Super Poly, so I can't really put that as in the Eltledge category for stuff like that. But man, feel like really people are really underestimating Eltledge in this format. I really feel like this could be a really good deck if people really just give it the try to it. Uh, but again, not a lot of people were playing Eltledge and only one person was topping with it and that was the Insector, uh, uh, Insector Eltledge deck that ended up topping. Again, I feel like people are really underestimating this deck. It has some really good stuff, especially the zombie version of the deck. Go Zombie Eltledge, try it out. This is just me putting it out there. Try the Zombie Eltledge version of this deck. It's very, very, very good. It can, hand, it can handle itself against the top five decks in the format. And then the, all the other Honorable Mention decks in I just mentioned as well. But I have to put it in Honorable Mention because I only got one top in the YCS. I can't justify it being in the top five. Even though... I would have put it in the top five if I had the chance to. But yeah, uh, so that is it for the honorable mentions. Now let's get in to number five. Coming in at number five is at Ignister. Oh boy, this deck has really been seeing a rise thanks to uh, Blazing for or not Blazing Vortex, Lightning Overdrive. My bad. Uh, Lightning Overdrive released uh, two new cards for this archetype: a Link One, which is ridiculous, and Link, uh, a spell card. As well, but adding Nister is always now that they have those two support cards. Most importantly, the Link One monster. This is where this deck has really, really shined because now they can go normal summon Ignister, get their effects depending on what the effect is. Link it off, go go for it, Link One. Link One, search out your uh, Ignister AI land and start doing combos from there. And then they have a really powerful end board where they summon a a Link Six Ag Ignister monster, which gains 1,000 attack for each material you use for its Link Summon, which you end up usually using four, so it goes to 4,000 attack. And that bitch is unaffected by everything. So just really, really ridiculous card. The only reason, the only way to out that card is going like access code talker to 5,300 and beat it over by attack and stuff like that. That's like the only way to out it. So this reason, I think Mister is a really good deck right now. You can throw a lot of hand traps in because it's basically a one card combo because thanks to the Link 1, being able to search out your Adagnister AI land and stuff like that. Uh, the only problem with the deck is, oh boy, can it not play through hand traps. If they end up like impermanent or something like that, if they end up like cosmic cycloning your Adagnisters or something like that, Adagnister AI land or something like that, just wow, it's, uh, Nibiru absolutely kills the deck as well and stuff like that. And just man, this is, oh boy, uh, it does not, it has a hard time uh, playing through hand traps. And stuff like that. More importantly, just Nibiru. Because Nibiru absolutely fucks this deck up. But I do have to put it at number 5. Because of that, it's all so, it got a couple tops in the YCS and stuff. So this is my number 5. Coming in at number 4 is Virtual World. Now, I was surprised when they uh, actually won the tournament back two weeks ago. Uh, with their uh, the tournament that happened in Florida. But now, they've been getting a lot of tops in the YCS. In the North American and the uh, European um, YCS as well. Holy shit, this deck is okay. I mean, it doesn't have VFD anymore, but still very good. Uh, it's basically just a control deck with Chuche. You go Shen Shen and stuff like that. Some variants that go into... Um, so after you do your Ultimate Zizoken and uh, the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, which is usually in the virtual place, they summon out uh, Muddy Mud Dragon, uh, go into a Synchro Summon, go into a Kalig. Kaliga, and then basically pass turn with that. This deck has this has many versions of the deck. It's just, just basically a control deck with Shen Shen, have the negation with the clear ring sync, uh, the crystal wing synchro dragon, and then have the Chuche pop as well. That's basically what this deck is. It's just a control deck with Shen Shen being a walking macro cosmos for the entire deck and stuff like that. That's very e- easy to go into as well. Well, so there is uh, that number four. The really surprising that Virtual World is seeing number four now. But I'm happy to see that because it's a very like low cost kind of deck. Lulu is like the most expensive card in the entire deck for that. So it's like very, very inexpensive to get this deck right now. And it's one of the best decks in the entire format right now. 
Uh, so yeah, if you want to pick up your hands on a deck that's very good but very cheap at the same time, get your hands on Virtual World because Virtual World is very, very good in this format right now and a very good control deck. But that is my number four. Coming in at number three is Sky Striker. Oh boy, they really made a mistake with this deck, did they? Why did you put Engage back to one? But yeah, this is my number three. It got four tops in the YCS, and it's not surprising to see why. It's a very, very powerful control deck in this format. You know, just basically going Link 1s, Link 1s, and getting into Engage. Engage being able to search if you have three more spells, draw one card. Engage is basically a Rota, uh, basically a pot of greed for the deck. That's not once per turn because they can get Kagari added back and stuff like that. Oh boy, and this just gives you so many uh, pluses in the deck and stuff like that. They control a heavy, heavy amount of hand trap count in the deck thanks to, well, them being able just to have one card combos and stuff like that with Ray, uh, being able just to go into Link 1s and stuff like that. It's just really really ridiculous it goes into grind matches is really good at grind matches thanks to like uh multi-roll and kagari being able to re uh set or add um uh sky striker spell cards back to hand or field depending on which one you activated and stuff like that just a very 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 powerful deck not surprising to see this up here uh, without a doubt oh boy this deck could be a problem uh why did you put engage back to one Konami, but hey, it's whatever. It's not number one, surprisingly. A lot of people were expecting that, but it's not number one. It is my number three. Coming in at number two is Drytron. Yeah, this is still at my number two. A lot of people are signing for this deck now, thanks to like Droll Knockbird and uh, Cycle Reader and stuff like that. But man, this deck is just so powerful. Holy shit. It, one hand trap is not going to stop this deck. Depending on what the hand trap is, even two hand traps might not even stop the uh, deck. Holy shit, this deck is a very, very powerful combo deck with Diviner of Herald, Drytron, Mew, Beta, Fafnir, and stuff like that. Oh, this deck is just really good, isn't it? But uh, the reason why it's my number two is because a lot of people are signing for this deck because of how powerful it is. Things like Draw and Lock Bird, things like Cycle Reader, and stuff like that. People are expected uh, to verse the Drytron matchup. It's just really really stupid deck combos off goes into herald of ultimates that basically can negate your entire hand on uh, uh, what to do and stuff like that this is a very very stupid deck a lot of people uh four tops i think it got not surprising uh things like heralds of the orange light is basically a hand trap negation and stuff like that neighbor nibiru really doesn't do anything against this deck droll does uh, but usually they draw the orange light anyway, so it ends up not mattering in the slightest and stuff like that. Man, this deck is just so powerful, and I'm so in glad uh, that it's so high up. Drytron, so, so good, so powerful. It's my number two, but it is not my number one. Coming in at number one is Tribagage, and oh yeah, it's finally achieving what it was supposed to be. A lot of people were expecting this to be the top deck in the entire format. And right now, it kind of is, but then again, the number one through four, you can basically rearrange however you want, because they all go competing against each other. This format has been really, really good. If you want diversity in your format, they can compete with anything. This format is for you, because there's a lot of decks in this format that you got to look out for. But Tribe Gage is my number one in this case. Why is that? It's just because, basically... Being able to cheat out Link Monsters and those Link Monsters being absolutely ridiculous and stuff like that. Uh, Fractal being able just to keep sending you your Wing Beast and stuff for your Banished stuff and stuff like that. Karas being a Special Summon and stuff. Banished 2, get yourself the Link 2 that came out in um, Lightning Overdrive. I think it's Baron Bloom or Blair Bear or something like that. Uh, go into Link 2, link that off, go to Appalooza, have the Ancient Warrior already on field. Uh, go ahead and do the Baron Blue to add Revolt, put one back. So you have a basically Appalooza um, Ancient Warrior Oath and then basically set the Revolt and have the Revolt basically as your Tribe Gage Ominous Omen and basically have a Banish during their turn. It's absolutely just a ridiculous deck, isn't it? It's a very powerful control deck as well. It's That's basically what it is. It doesn't really play into the Nibiru range. Their fifth summon is the Appalooza, so that's why they really don't need to worry about the Nibiru in this case. But just a very, very powerful deck. Uh, not surprising to see this at number 
one. So, but yeah, that is it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more content on the channel. I do upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday with a stream on Saturday or Sunday. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.